What's happening, my boy? What's good, family? Another day in paradise. You know what it is. Hey, despite it all, it yes, really sir. is another day in paradise. Yes, sir. Every day above the ground is a good day, man. Hey, man, for sure, dog. And we could we we gonna jump right into that because um, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. This is the season opener mm-hmm. for BTM Pod Show, season five. <laughs> Season five, man. So it's been a while. We've been through a lot. You have been through a lot. Yeah. Times ten. Yeah. And um, man, that's why we're here, bro. So I, I, I you know, before I even try to articulate anything, I, I just want to open the floor up for you, man, and just like, what's up, man? I'm, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to have you sitting across from me. I want to be able to share some of these stories, but. I just want to pass the mic to you, man, and just kind of let everybody know the reason why we've been on hiatus Mm -hmm. for several months. Uh, Fans constantly see us in the airport. They asking different places, hey, man, when y'all going to drop a new one? So I told them soon, soon, soon. And so I'm happy and proud to sit here before all of the season five BTM fans and just say, you know what? We here and we back. So we're back. <laughs> we're back. So too, what's happening? Let everybody know what's been going on because yeah. this has been very important for you. Yeah, absolutely, man. And and for those who don't know it, there, there are quite a few. Um, we took a little bit of a, hi- a hiatus, a little break after uh, after the Super Bowl season four, and prior to that. Um, Back in December, I was actually diagnosed with lymphoma. And being that September is National Leukemia and Lymphoma Awareness Month, it's only right that, you know, we came back now to, to talk about it. And it's been a it's been a journey. It's not over yet. Um, but that is the majority of the reason why we took a little break. And, you know, Life be lifing. Life happens. You know what I mean? Shout life be what? <laughs> life be life, man. Shout out to Shay for that, for that jewel. For real, bro. You know bro. what I mean? But um, yeah. So, you know, I I want to thank you. I want to thank Los. Because without y'all, I want to even know, to be honest with you. Um, in our community, particularly athletes, particularly black men men in general, we always have this invincible feeling or this feeling like, you know, I, I'll get to it or things going to be all right. And it was no different with me. Um, I was at the range a couple years ago. One of my boys came down and I noticed that he had like a little, he had a fanny pack on. And I'm like, bro, this ain't the 80s. What you rocking a fanny pack for? You know what I mean? And I asked him later on and he, he told me he had, um, he had a hernia. He had like a lump on his groin or whatever. And my man Randy, and then I, I was like, yo, what did you do? Why don't you get it checked out or whatever? He's like, oh, I'm going to go to the doctor. And, you know, But I, I waited too long, and it, it swole up, so now he has to have surgery. Right. So I said, it's crazy because I got a lump on my groin too. I said, mine is small, you know, and um, I'm like, shit, might be a hernia too. He's like, two, get it checked out. I'm like, ah, get it checked out. So this is back in like um, probably, probably 2021 maybe. I don't know. But... um. I did. So that led to 2022. And um, same thing, I'm, I'm sitting there like, damn, it, it goes from like a pea size to now it feels like a marble. And I think that's when I told you and Los, I'm like, yo, bro, shit is, I feel like it's growing. It might be something. And this is still early 2022. And y'all like, yo, bro, get it checked out. Don't don't be the, the two that's, you know, thinks everything is all right and you sweeping things under the rug and nonchalant about everything. It's like, nah, get it, get it checked out, get it checked out. God. Yeah, because you are the superior dude who loves... It ain't procrastinating. It's waiting till the time is right. Well, <laughs> you are the dude who's who see the dust on the floor. Right. But you're like, ah, I'll go back and get it the next time I walk through. I mean... But proceed. I just wanted to add you know I mean? color commentary but, to what you just and, said. And, and in my defense, I really believe, honestly, you know, despite 
I look at everything as half full, right? And I, I think that we put out so much good energy into the universe that good things will come back to us. So I tend not to worry about things. And this was no different. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. And I find, you know, I do my annual at the end of the year, like every year. And uh, I tell the doctor, I was like, you know, I think I might have a hernia. You know, this is going on and asking what, you know, what else is any other symptoms. I'm like, well, you know, I'm fatigued all the time. You know, you, you waking up in sweats. I'm like, occasionally, but I just figured it's hot. I just turn the AC on, you know, I'm not thinking nothing of it. I'm just, it is what it is. I'm not even paying attention that something could really be going on because it's nothing that felt major at the time. Yeah. No different. If you tired, you know, get some rest, wake up the next day, take a, you know, protein shake, energy, whatever, keep it moving. So the doctor did all the testing, uh, you know, the initial preliminary test. He's like, nah, this ain't this ain't no hernia. I want to do some more tests. I'm like, what you mean? Like, what could it be? So he's like, all right, we're going to order a, a biopsy. So this is, now we're going to like Christmas last year. So right before Christmas. 2022. 2022. So right before Christmas, I do the biopsy. Um, Never forget, bro. Like, it was the 23rd, December 23rd, because I was hooping with London. Um. She was hooping. I was, you know, taking her to practice, I should say. And the doctor called me, so I had to take it. So I took the call. He's like, yo, we think it's uh, it's cancerous. There's a chance that it's lymphoma. So I'm like, first response, no lie. I said, well, that's fucked up. <laughs> it's like, yo, what else, what else can you say? You know, it's right before Christmas, and you know something might be wrong, but that's when, you, you know, you get the news right before the holidays or whatever. I was like... All right, it is what it is. But now, you know, London's there, so I'm like, I got to shug it off and go yeah. back for her because she's getting ready for, you know. Be strong, yeah, make be sure strong. you stay, yeah. you keep, know, keep stay the in poker control. face on. So, you know, that I, I get that news and obviously got to let the family know and everything, but the biopsy came back and they didn't have enough of a sample size to find out, so you want to do more tests. They did more tests and it was like, ah, yeah, it is lymphoma. So now, you know, got to deal with that and and... and process that and and you found this out right right after christmas yeah so i get yeah and i had to take the next biopsy in in january so that's when i find out you know it is lymphoma and then of course they give you the stages and the grades and you know what that means and and the whole journey of what that is you know and and that's something that you can't put in the words you can't articulate we, we former athletes there ain't no game plan for that nah. <laughs> ain't no game plan we, for that news and um we game plan life and we game plan games yeah. so it, it it was it's a hell of a journey you know and and i'm blessed to be here to this day bro and and that's really you know how it started and that's why we've been chilling for a little bit that's why we've been on the, been on a hiatus man and so, you know you let me know in January. Yeah. And um, you kind of gave me heads up in December, yeah. but we didn't know. Yeah. But January, I remember you telling me, and it hit me hard. And immediately we had all of these plans to talk about Super Bowl and, mm -hmm. you know, let, let's, let's go gather content and behind the mask yeah. deserves a presence um, in Arizona. So... Um, I guess, you know, for me, just, I didn't even want to ask you at the time. I, I was just like, how were you able to keep it together when we were out there? What was Super Bowl like for you knowing that after we done or after we do all of the shoots that we were set to do, when you come back home, you gotta do now, it. you know, life be life. Yeah. It was, it was wild, man. Like, so again, I'm I'm a half full kind of guy. So, and you know me, Spikes. I do a lot, so life doesn't catch up to me. That's just the way I live. I've been that way since a kid. But eventually, things are gonna catch up to you, right? And for me, I'm kind of I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that I caught it when I did. So it wasn't as bad as it could have been. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you you, you got to look at things in life as like, all right, as men particularly, this is the cause that we've been dealt, right? 
So I right, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna play these cards, but I'm gonna play them to the best of my ability and move my chess pieces in my life to the best of my ability so I have the most favorable result. And that's what I did. Like I could live in it. Of course you feel a certain way. Of course you feel like, you know, damn, what's next? Anybody hears cancer, you like, you automatically think it's a death sentence. You feel like it's a death sentence. But the way I live is like, I right, like I say, it's another day in paradise. I'm still here. I'm, I'm gonna do my best to live life. Now, is that to say that it was it was easy? Hell no, it wasn't easy. It's not easy now. I think Super Bowl was something to look forward to, and I know BTM, we had so much plan. Yeah. So that's why I kind of scheduled the procedures around it. I had a bone marrow biopsy the day that I flew to, to Phoenix, bro. I remember. You remember that? Like, literally, you know, you get sedated, they make sure the cancer is or isn't in your bones, and then flew straight to to Phoenix. You got me right. Bone marrow biopsy is done. That'll let me know what stage it is. And go from there. So for me, again, it was just putting stuff in front of me so I ain't have to worry about what's behind me. And that's kind of like, like, again, that's, that's kind of like how I live, but it was therapeutic for me being in Super Bowl because I got to see all the cats we used to play ball with, all the cats we used to play against, sharing the war stories. Of course, only people out there that knew was me and you. Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't comfortable telling people. Um, I had, I had the uh, the plan, you know, that the oncologist gives you in terms of what the treatments are gonna look like. Um, I knew it was on the horizon, so but it's like. You know, everybody knows somebody that's had cancer. You know how you felt on the side watching them. I don't want to be the person that people felt sorry for. So I ain't tell nobody. Except for, you know, an immediate circle, a couple of people. And the people I saw in Arizona gave me another boost, like, yo, this is this is all right. You know, the interviews that we did that lasted so long, it's like, it's all right. You know what I mean? And I always say that I never complain because, what, a million people would love to have our problems. Yeah. You know, this is a form. The form is a form of cancer. Um, but there's people that I know that they allergic to the, to, the, uh, to the medicine to help cure it or help, you know, put it in remission. The people I know that have passed from, I got family members that have passed from cancer. The people that I know that live with it that, can't walk. So if none of that happened to me yet, why would I let my life be lived off of the fear of the unknown or fear of what's on the horizon? It's like, nah, you just gotta live in that moment. You know what I mean? And and that's that's me. That's what I do. That's what I did. And that's what got me through being in the Super Bowl and, you know, being able to cope and manage and deal. It ain't easy. Nah, it ain't easy. It ain't easy to this day, bro. But um yeah, that's that's just how you know, so I live with it. The immediately for me, after we got off the phone, I was floored, bro. Like I was, I lost my father to cancer, and you know I'm like, you know it was it's perspectives that really jumped out. I'm thinking of like family, brother wise, like how you doing? Like, you know, what's the conversation with your with your in internal family? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's important. You know, for me, then it went to, all right, I'm family. Then the second part for me was just, all right, the business. This is what we created. So, like, you know, do we go? Do we not go? Yeah. And that's, and for me, what really, because I really, I was totally okay with not doing anything. Yeah, I know. And I told you that. But you looked at me and you was like, nah, we gonna keep it going. Yeah. Like, what I'm gonna do? Sit back and just be miserable and wait for something bad to happen? Right. And when you expressed to me that how you felt, or how you, you know, how you felt at that time, I was just like, I get it. Yeah. I see, like, 
Like, this is what keeps you going. So I see you're not feeling sorry for yourself, so why should I feel sorry for you? But I am here for you, and I wanted you to know that. And so just that from that perspective, it, it really it, it changed the way that I thought. It, it, I already respect you, love you, but it just gave me a whole different respect for the way that you think and the way that how you move and you go about and handle your business, man. So, you know, for me, that, that was the biggest thing that I thought of and like, what are we going to do moving forward? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's so easy to, to sit down and feel sorry for yourself and you think about all the thoughts that come through your head. You think about, man, I thought about my father. I thought about flying back home, you know, after some games to go check up on him because I didn't know. You know, uh, I thought about the conversation that you were having with your family with London, yeah. with all the kids, mm -hmm. Sheik, mm -hmm. your mom, you know what I'm saying, Ray, Big Al, like yeah. everybody, you know what I'm saying? So the boys, all of, all of the crew. So, like, man, I, I applaud you just for your courage. And I think the big thing that I really want to applaud you for is getting off of your ass and going to go get it checked. Yeah, for sure. Because we all push you to that point to go and do it. Uh, but it was up to you to actually just say, you know what, let me go ahead and and do this thing. But, like, grateful to be to have this opportunity for us to share. Um, one question I have for you, why do you feel like, you know, just to let our viewers know, we had no intentions on doing this episode. Yeah. But you wanted to do it. And I want to ask you why did you feel like it was incumbent upon you to spread the message about the awareness of what you went through and how we can at least just take time out of our day to check on our own selves? Yeah, well, I want to go back a little bit. And, and again, thank you and definitely thank, thank Los because... We so close as 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 friends, and we always say true friend and brothers. Like, if it wasn't for literally y'all cursing me out, telling me get off my ass, like you putting it politely for you know the audience, but yo get up and go to the doctor because you waiting for. That's exactly. Like, <laughs> you know I'm like, are you stupid? Are you stupid, right? Lowe's cursing me out. Like, so if it took that for something that could have been terminal like it shouldn't take that and part of that is the reason why I wanted to talk about it because there are people out there that are dealing with something that might be might seem simple or something that might seem like minuscule but you never know like again it was the you know the size of a pea you know, I ain't thinking nothing of that like who knows you know what I mean mosquito bite no. <laughs> Mosquito no. ain't got no business down there. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, you're right. It might be so bell's chill. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, but you know, you never know what it could be, bro. So I think that for me, that that's what it was. And and you never really know. And we and we're getting, you know, we respectfully be getting older. Y'all are a little bit older than me. You know, I'm the young one at the crew, you know what I'm saying? Um I see that shot you just threw just then though. I'm just saying, you know, facts is facts, bro. You know how to go. But uh, you know, and, and we we at that age, but now we gotta start getting certain tests, you know what I'm saying? And doing certain things, checking on your levels for X, Y, Z or whatever. And that's something I wasn't doing yet. Plan to do, but it's something I wasn't doing. But I just think that you you have to. It's, it's a must. Because you mentioned the people. You mentioned my mom's uh, Aunt Jackie, Sheikha, the kids, Ty, Maya, in London. Al Ray, like my, my immediate family sis, like people that are in my life that depend on me for whatever. Depend on me to pick up that phone call, depend on me for whatever it might be. So imagine me being me. Imagine me not taking it serious. Imagine me just sweeping it under the rug or thinking that everything is gonna be all right when it really is not, when I could have. When I found out, they the first, the first. The first uh, correspondence I got from my doctors, they 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 thought it was stage three. 
So that's the first thing I saw before I actually went back in to, to speak to the oncologist. I'm like, dang. So they did more tests and then it's like, okay, it's behaving more like stage, stage, you know, stage two. But I'm still like, yo, this is this is wild, bro. Like, who who would have thought of that? And I remember, you know, I kept a journal. I was like, damn, at 45, that NFL shit don't mean nothing. <laughs> I said before, we you, you play in the NFL, you you all pro linebacker. That means you was the best, one of the two best uh middle linebackers in the NFL at that time, right? In the world. Best football players in the world. So you one of the two best in your position in the world. Right. You're the top of the mountain top. None of that mean nothing. If your insides ain't right, if your mind ain't right, spiritually you ain't right. I play offensive guard. I ain't make it to the Pro Bowl or Pro, but I was one of the top, what, 16 guards, one of the top 16 in the league, in the world. It don't mean nothing. If, you're, if your mind ain't right, if your insides ain't right, if your your spirituality ain't right, what, what, what all is that? Nothing. Well, I'm back at this doctor, getting these tests. Gotta get a MUGA scan, multigated acquisition scan or something. Take my blood out, radiate it, and then inject it back in me. Who knew? 45 years old with cancer. The NFL shit don't mean nothing. So, to be able to be here and talk about it and, and encourage people to go through it, encourage people to get checked, Encourage people to do their annual. Just, you know, it don't it only take a couple minutes, you know, to get your blood work done and get everything done. Because the flip side is finding out something when it's too late. And everybody that has prayed for me, like it, it was, it was, you know, spikes. It was tough, bro. Like, how was that for- that process? Like, the process of just knowing. All right, my first chemo session. I remember I'm putting in my calendar, okay, you know, second chemo session. I need to see how he bounces back. I don't want to bother him, but I just want to let you know, we want to know like you are I. It's it's wild because you, they give you, they give you like a a timeline of what that's going to look like, how many treatments you have to have, what's going to happen to you with the treatments and et cetera. So the first one, I did was March 9th, and that's that's Maya's birthday. That's my daughter's birthday. So when I came back, it's like celebrating, but yeah, I love you. I got to go handle this. So that whole process is wild. And, and all the, again, surgeries they got to do, they put the, the pick line in you and, you know, still got the little scar from that. But they do that and all the blood drawn and, you know, go through the chemo. The chemo was wild, bro. Let me first listen. I don't wish that on nobody. Like it, it, it <laughs> you asked me how I felt. It literally felt like, first of all, me being thinking I'm stronger than anything. You know how it is when we have a surgery. What's the first thing we do? They give us the uh, the anesthesia. We sitting there like I'm gonna fight it as long as I can. I'm gonna stay I'm up. Gonna stay Watch. up. Watch. Count to five. Count to five. One. <laughs> you out, you out, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing with the chemo, bro. I was like, oh, I could take this. It's like, all right, well, you gotta take. Uh, I think you have to take Benadryl. No, I had to take Zyrtex in the morning to kind of, in case I was allergic to anything that they put in my body, to, to offset it. So because of the way certain things happen at the doctor and them putting my pick line in the morning of, it was so much going on that I didn't take the Zyrtec. So by the time I get to the, to the. Uh, the oncologist, um, they're like, did you take the Zyrtex? I'm like, nah, I forgot. They's like, you forgot? I was like, well, y'all scheduled something for me the day before. That didn't work out, so y'all rescheduled it to this morning. I literally forgot. I didn't plan on putting the pick line in and then coming straight to get the chemo. So now I'm getting the chemo. Bro, I woke up. When I tell you, it felt like, what's the most you ever squatted? Maybe like eight hundred pounds. Nah, I was just playing. Maybe like 
Man, I don't even know. The thought of putting weight on my Listen. back hurts my back <laughs> right now. Whatever the, your max was squatting in the NFL, imagine. I would say maybe like, maybe like six something. Imagine you sleep and they wake up. And you wake up and you feel like 600 pounds is sitting on your chest. Now, not on no bench, but just sitting on your chest. And you wake up, you like, damn, why can I not breathe? Why, can, why does it feel so heavy? That's how I felt as soon as I woke up. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What's, what's going on? And it's like, this is how the chemo is, is, is treating you. It's how it's reacting in your body. It's like, well, do you want Benadryl? And at first I was like, nah, I don't want no Benadryl. It's more drugs. I already took like five or six drugs, capsules, everything they're giving me. And I got chemo. I was like, I don't want no little I'm fighting it. They're like, nah, you need it. So finally, you know, my mom's like, yo, two, you know, don't don't be two, take the damn medicine. So I'm like, all right. So I finally took the medicine. Medi Benadryl get you high as hell. This ain't no over-the-counter Benadryl. This is straight to your IV like a cocktail. This hell. I was like, oh, this the real right here. This is, you know what I'm <laughs> So I started feeling a little better in the moment, but that chemo, bro, I, I don't wish that on nobody. And it, it's like an all-day session from freaking... Eight in the morning, or four or five in the afternoon, and then again, I'm not. This ain't a pity party for me because there are people that have to do it way more than I had to do it. I'm just, you know, telling my 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 journey. Real talk. And it, it was rough, bro. Like, you know, I, I didn't even trip on the whole losing the head thing. I was like, it is what it is. I found out in the most awkward way. Pause it up front. I went to the bathroom, and I'm, you know cleaning up and everything. I'm like, oh, guess it's happening. Hair's falling off in places that, you know, I ain't shaved, so I was like, I guess it's happening. You know what I mean? So it's little things like that. And again, I can laugh at it now because I got to find a way to to conceptualize and, and, and deal with the fact that uh, the way your body is changing. Again, ain't no game plan for that. Not at, at what, 45? Not being who I am or who I was or, you know, ain't, ain't no game plan for that. You, you can hear it, but you don't know till you go through it, bro. And yeah, man, I, I don't wish that on nobody. However... I do wish everybody get checked and keep their faith, regardless of what, whatever's going on in your life. Cause that ain't, that has to be unwavering. You know what I mean? So going through it as a person, trying to really understand how you're feeling, because you don't know, based yeah. off of what you just said. Like you don't know until you actually go through it. We as, your family, we as your loved ones, we as close-knit friends, all we want to do is support. And I want to ask, because I think support is key, I can speak on my perspective of what we used to do or try to do to try to show you we were there, but just talk about it from your perspective. Like, how much did support help you going through all of this, especially throughout the chemo session? Yeah. And it may be sometimes to where... We may have done something for you or 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 we probably didn't, but just talk about the importance of support. Man, you, you only strong is your support system, bro. Like that that's I can't speak enough again about the people that were there for me, the people that were there for me before, during, and after the journey. Um each chemo session, my mother was there. She would not each doctor session. I mean, if I had to go up there to just get my blood drawn, my mom's was like, I'm coming. I'm like, man, you ain't got to come to get my blood. It's a blood test. Like, we all right. You know what I'm saying? But just to, to know that people that you got people in your life that are never going to switch sides on you, that are always going to be there, it's amazing, man. My aunt was there at every session. Sheikah was there at every session. Like, those, those women, bro, like, those queens held your boy up. I'm telling y'all, man, you can't keep a good brother down. I'm trying to take a brother home. He just finished the procedure. Look, look at him. I love you more. Peace and love. Love you. Those queens held the king up. 
day and night, huh? Day and night. Day and night. Just everything, bro, from... Bro, had to go home and get... As soon as you get the chemo done, you got to get shot. I got to get shots in my stomach. And I ain't about to shoot myself up with no needle. I couldn't do it. So she could make sure I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like making sure my medicines is on point. My Aunt Jackie gave me a, gave me a, a phrase that helped me through. She was like, day by day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. And she said, say that every day. Every day. And I just kept saying that. I kept saying that. I kept saying it. Because one day... You feel like next day you feel like hard. <laughs> next day you feel like soft. <laughs> but the other day you feel like you got a clean ass. It's like you, know, you feel all right. You know what I'm saying? It's like days of you, you never know what the fuck you go what you gonna feel. You never know what you gonna feel, man. You know the kids were there for me, and I, I told them I said, listen, whatever y'all got going on. To my in London, I said, let me get through this first. Just, just no drama. No drama with the boyfriends, the girlfriends, the this, the that, school, work, cars, nothing. Let this time frame be about me. I'll get back with y'all. I got y'all when I'm done. You know what I mean? And it and one I thank you, bro, because I remember y'all, y'all wanted to come by the house. I'm like, nah, I don't want to see nobody. That's when the you know, the hair start falling out. I don't want to see nobody, man. You know, I'm a plus size model still, you know. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to see, I don't want people to see me weak because I've never been weak in front of nobody. Always been a strong one. Prideful. And with prideful, and when I'm not strong, I laugh. He's a prideful <laughs> one, y'all. You know what Very I'm saying? prideful. So, I remember y'all, um, you and Lois, y'all pulled up. Y'all just said, nah, y'all pulled up to the crib. You drove Lois over there, bro, just to see me. Just to see how I was doing. And it meant so much, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much love. Yeah, come check on the big fella. Yes, sir, yes, Make sir. Make sure he eat all the mac and cheese. <laughs> Time with that burger. Time to eat it, though. <laughs> like, to see my boys, my brothers that knew I was down bad, to come and just sit there and watch TV, bro. The simplest that we take for granted. That shit meant the world. You say, yo, yo, Spice, what you want? I'm like, man, I'm good, bro. I said, I, I just can't wait to be able to be around people. Because, you know, you can't be around everybody. I can't wait to be around people again so I can get a steak. My boy said, yo, you can't be around nobody, but I got something. I got something coming to your house. You send steaks to my house. I said, God damn. That's real. That support that got me through the worst time of my life, man. The worst time of my life. And you know, it ain't over, but I know that I got people that I could depend on. When I'm going through the shit I'm going through, the stuff I'm going through. So that support is huge, man. Like, it don't take nothing to call somebody. It don't take nothing to check on somebody. I was telling Simone when I, earlier, I said, one of the things I, I, I stand by and I still live by is like, if somebody crosses your mind that you ain't spoke to in a while, it's like, yo, the universe is putting your God is putting them on your mind for a reason. It don't take two seconds to shoot him a text. Hey, man, just checking on you. Hey, hey, you know, homegirl or whatever. You know, my lady, whatever. Just checking on you. You know, hope all is well. That's easy. Because you don't know when the next time is the last time. And what's the first thing when somebody passes? You start remembering, damn, the last time. Yeah. You go through your phone and say, damn, I didn't text this person Last month, when they freaking text me, I was too busy to reply. Nah, if they mean something to you, you know, reach out. It don't take nothing. It's a text. Take two seconds. You check your phone for everything else. Yeah, you're <laughs> you feel right. Me? So yeah, that support, bro. That that like is major, and and I don't discriminate against my blessings. 
whatever religion or belief you have, however spiritual, if you've prayed for me, Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, what else we got? <laughs> it, it, don't, it don't matter. It don't even matter. It don't even matter. I accept all blessings, bro. Because that that helped me get through. If it was... I would like to say if it's one thing that you could share with the brethren of the NFL, but I got to check myself because you just reminded me, like, I don't discriminate against any blessings. And you don't discriminate against anybody who you're trying to help and support. You've always Facts. been that way. Facts. Don't don't matter. So versus me, I want to rephrase the question. If you could tell anybody out there whether or not if it's I'll first say NFL because that's what we're used to, mm -hmm. dealing with each other. We all were built up from a young age thinking that we're bulletproof. And we think that we're invincible and we are the last ones to go check on ourselves. But I'm saying, what would you tell everybody? And I'm making this all inclusive. Regardless if you're black, white, we know with black men, we are the last people mm -hmm. to go get all get ourselves checked on. Also, black women, they black women hold us down. Yeah. They are the rock. So what would be your message to them? when it's about taking time out for yourself. And it's okay to be selfish, to make yeah. sure you're okay, because if you're not okay, how can anybody else be okay? Yeah, that, that's that's definite, man. Like, I I would say, especially first to the young brothers in the league, as well as the OGs, the old guys that are retired like us, get your test. Get your test done. Don't ignore the signs. We say that all the time. I don't care if it's a cold that lingered, if it's a you know a lump that you feel. Get get checked, get tested. Do your annuals. And at this age, at our age, we're in our forties now. It's multiple times a year, like it ain't and it don't hurt you. It don't hurt you. It's better to find something on the front end so you can forecast whatever journeys ahead of you. Than finding out when it's too late. That's the thing. And I and I wrapping my mind around that, bro. Like, imagine had I waited, had I continued to wait. Yeah. They were ready, thought it was stage three, bro. But one more. Like, imagine. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. So yeah, get please get checked. Please. I'm like, I'm some of y'all don't even know when I'm begging y'all, bro. Cause we see our age, we see. Cats left and right that we done went to war with on a football field. And they passing away in their 30s, their 40s, their 50s. Like, that's way too young. Some of it could have been prevented had we just went to the doctor and got checked. Some of it is 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 part of your journey and it's, it's written. I get it. But if some of it can be prevented and, and you taking care of yourself and you living a healthy life... Yo, you, you have to do that. It, you, we've been afforded way too much to let something as simple as being lazy be the reason why we have an early demise. We wasn't lazy when we played. We made it to the top. And I'm, I'm speaking to the NFL guys now and athletes in general. Just We made it to the top of our respective professions, right? Right. That's hard work, dedication. Why would you be lazy after the fact? That ain't in you. You started off as a kid playing a sport. That's innate. That's in you to, to to be assertive, be intentional. Like you always say, be intentional in your your decisions, your choices. Why would you start being lazy now when it comes to your health? Nah, that ain't it. And people in general, like especially at our age, man, like you got to figure we life expectancy was supposed to be what seventy something like that. Yeah, maybe seventy five. Maybe I'm, I'm maybe shooting too too low. I don't know. Maybe I don't, I don't put it like this: If life expectancy is seventy five, you middle aged, <laughs> you thirty seven, change, bro. 
I mean, you halfway done. You, yeah. <laughs> Realistically. Mm-hmm. If it's 80 something, if I'm wrong, if it's 80 at 40, you halfway there. That mean your insides is halfway running out. <laughs> it's like real spill. So it's like you you have to stay on top of your health. And I remember my mother used to say this when I was a kid. The, the number one thing you have is your health. The number one thing. And it don't hit the same when you're young. You're like, ah, what you, you talking about, yeah, mom? Like, I'm like, your health? I'm, I'm young. Like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm running around. I'm the fastest kid on the block. You know what I'm saying? I'm stronger than this person. I'm this is that. You don't think nothing about none of that. But now as I get older, I'm like, damn. This is what you was talking about. That's the number one thing you have because you don't got your health and you ain't got nothing. Think wow. about it. And I, I, I want to add to what you were saying, especially to the NFL brethren out there, like, we have resources that we can yeah. go go and check. You know, I think about the Player Care Foundation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They take that thing on the road. Yeah. Different cities across the country just so guys can get their numbers checked. I think about the trust mm-hmm. and, 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 and doing the comprehensive medical where they have at least five places to where you can, four places that I know that you can go. You know, Cleveland, I think about South Florida and Weston. Mm-hmm. I think out in Cali. New Orleans, I believe. New Orleans yeah. as well, as too. Too. So, um, you know, man, let's let's you know, we can't take care of nobody nobody else if we ain't taking care of ourselves. So Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I I I appreciate you wanting to to put this and make this become the first episode yeah, for season five behind the mask because you know, sometimes you just don't know, and I know yeah. it was very hard to talk about. It's hard for me to even sit over here on this side and hear some of the things that you've said that I didn't even know. Yeah. So I, I I appreciate that, bro. Hey, man, listen, man, it's, it's needed, and I'd rather be able to tell somebody this now. Hopefully it resonates with somebody in our audience because we have to hold each other accountable, just like y'all held me accountable. So it may not necessarily be you but it may be somebody in your family or your friends, your inner circle, your outer circle. Yo, hold each other accountable because the flip side could be something that you regret. And, you know, I'm able to talk about it now. Mm-hmm. I still have my days where I don't feel like getting out of bed. Where, you know, where the depression sets in, where... You call me at 2 o'clock and you're like, what you doing? You still in the bed? Oh, it was one of them days. Like, it's 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 still here, but it's like I got to, you damn near got to force yourself to, to keep it going, like I said in the beginning, you know? But make sure that you check on your strong friends, your strong family members, and check yourself. You know what I'm saying? Check yourself. And I'll be remiss if I ain't think, I already, you know, told you my mother was there every day on Jackie, Sheikah, Ty, Maya, London, my kids, you Los, DG, you know, Tang used to call me every day like, yo, you you drinking the wrong juice. You doing, you know, Reen, everybody, Ray, Al, like my people that are in my immediate circle that looked out, the nurses, the doctors at Kaiser, Nurse Beth, I got to give you a shout-out because she watches the show, which was sweet. Dr. Gladney, they got me through, you know, and the whole Kaiser uh, Permanente staff. And my people, Shantae, she got me through, got me with some other oncologists to get a get a second opinion, another doctor. Like, there were, there were some people that were, were definitely there during the journey. The people that I didn't tell, don't hold it against me. Don't hold it against me because a person that's going through something, you don't know what they're going through. So imagine if I'm being told I got four sessions of chemo, first thing I do is equate it to a game, four quarters. So I do the first session, all right, that's the first quarter. How do I feel? Uh, I can deal with this, can't deal with that, this sucks, da 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 Second session, this is what's happening. Oh, hair's coming out, boom, 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 Nail, fingernails getting dark. Your body's changing, things are going on. So imagine me telling somebody after I'm in the second quarter, I'm at halftime. Imagine me going back to where I was in November and December before the game even started. 
and reliving it through that perspective because the first time I'm telling this person is how they feel when they first heard it, the same way how I felt when I first heard it. I got to the point where I couldn't do that no more. Couldn't relive it I couldn't the relive time. it over and over and over and over again. So please don't hold it against me if I haven't told you or if I told you later on in the process. It's all love. Y'all know I live by love. And again, just make sure y'all please check, take care of yourself. Your health is all you got. Promise, bro. I thank you because, like I said, without y'all cursing me out and being the big brother, y'all are, who knows? You know what I'm saying? So, and your sis, too. Sis gave me the gave me the love and the blessings and, and helped me out. So, to Lisa, so love. There's so many people, you know, I want to thank. But, again, anybody that said a prayer, that kept it a secret, that got upset when I told them late, I love all y'all. Like, like I say, what you gonna do? You can't beat me. <laughs> what you gonna do? And don't forget, Spice got mad because that cat she ain't came back. Oh, that, uh, man, that she you don't came put a kid in your head. <laughs> you know Look like that a cat been did. licking your hair, man. My hair was curly and nice like this don't before, have one yo. like that before, Go man. back don't to season four. Don't, don't do front. that. You just mad because you ain't got that, you know what I'm saying? My, it's like that when I let it grow out, bro. Chill out, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, I appreciate you, bro, for real, more than you know, man. Yeah, man, all love, bro, all sir. love. Yes, sir. So I guess it's fair to say that we can go ahead and proceed and start with season five and keep this oh, thing yeah. going. Oh, yeah, season five going to be major. Some some dope guests coming up, dope conversations, behind the mask, behind the scenes, things that we really been going through. My boy done ran with the Bulls in the off season. We got a lot to talk about still, bro. We got a lot to talk about, bro. A lot Wait till I about. see that one. Wait till I see that one. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if I'm relinquishing that film, but we can toast on it, though. Salute, salute.